Ben is seen having an argument with his girlfriend, Susie, who calls him a loser. Having had enough, he breaks up with her, and this enrages Susie even more. She starts throwing objects at him, and at this moment, everything turns into slow motion for Ben. In the aftermath of the breakup, Susie quickly moves on and finds solace in a guy. Ben notices them together in the college cafeteria and becomes distraught. Hence, to distract himself, he joins art classes. Since Ben has been interested in making portraits ever since he was a child, he effortlessly makes beautiful paintings, which surprises even the teacher. Ben specializes in making ultra-realistic human portraits. However, at night, things become extremely tough for him. Ben cannot seem to get over his breakup, as every time he closes his eyes, he sees Susie. Days pass, and he eventually becomes insomniac. Now, Ben cannot fall asleep for even an hour. The memories of his ex-girlfriend are slowly turning him into a depressed maniac. Overwhelmed by regret and suffering, Ben finally gives Susie a call and pleads with her to come back. He also apologizes for turning their relationship into a mess, promising to never do it again. But despite Ben stooping so low for her, Susie refuses his request and hangs up the call. This sends Ben spiraling into an even deeper abyss of despair. Over the course of the next few days, he tries his best to pass the time. Ben reads books, watches movies, and even goes on solo trips to other cities. However, when night falls, the insomnia kicks in, making it harder for him to concentrate on anything else. So, he starts going on random tours in the dark as well. One night, he heads to a local supermarket, where he notices a job vacancy announcement for a night shift guy. Ben thinks that it is the perfect opportunity to pass the time and earn some money, so he immediately applies for the job. The following day, he scores an interview with the manager, Jenkins, and eventually lands the job. Ben is finally happy after a long time, and he has a gut feeling that his life is about to change. As Ben becomes accustomed to his new job, he notes how each of his co-workers handles the art of passing the time differently. The cashier, Sharon Ponte, has the most unique style. She makes sure to always hide the clock with various objects. She believes that the time will pass slowly if she looks at it. Then there's a mischievous guy called Barry Brickman, who is never serious at work. Along with his equally cunning friend, Matt Stevens, he plays different pranks on the female customers like slipping an adult toy in their bags. Some of the customers are perplexed when they find it. However, some of them decide to keep it. The only guy who doesn't seem to care about the time is their boss, Jenkins. He can go on and on about how successful and rich he is. Once he starts with his egoistical speeches, time passes very fast for him. But of all the night shift employees, Ben has the most unusual way of passing the time. In the pangs of his deep melancholy, Ben dissociates himself from time and reality. In other words, he uses his superpowers to freeze time and eventually his surroundings, so that he can do whatever he pleases. Normally, one would run away with money or do some explicit stuff, but Ben just wants to hone his artistic skills. Since he is in awe of the female body, he picks random customers, gently disrobes them, and begins drawing their portraits. Ben has no lubricious feeling towards them, he just wants to make sure his passion for art never dies. Once he is done, he dresses them back, and cracks his fingers, causing time to start flowing once again. This has become Ben's life now. It is not something that he can be proud of, but at least, he is not that depressed and crazy person anymore. At home, Ben often hangs out with his best friend, Sean. The two have been together ever since they were kids. Sean is the exact opposite of Ben, as all he wants is to get into a girl's pants. It is revealed that he has been to every stripper club in the city. One night, during his night shift, Ben encounters the cashier, Sharon, in the locker room. He appears to have a crush on her but can't bring himself together to express it. But as they talk, the friendly cashier takes a bite out of his sandwich, shocking him. A small piece of pickle sticks to Sharon's cheek, and she awkwardly tries to wipe it out, but to no avail. Seeing her struggle, Ben steps in and wipes it off for her, creating a very cheesy moment between the two. After a while, Sharon decides to leave and heads towards the door. Ben wants to freeze the moment and live in it for a week, but by the time he comes to his senses, Sharon is already gone. After a while, as he is going about his work, Matt suddenly pops up from one of the stalls, and reveals that he is going to the movies with Sharon. This devastates Ben, and he wonders why he is so unlucky. He then recalls his school days where he fell in love for the first time. She was the smartest girl in the class, whom everyone used to like. One day, she got into an accident and sprained her arm, because of which she had to wear a heavy cast. Every day, her classmates used to write encouraging stuff on it to make her feel better. Ben also wanted to write something, but he was too nervous to even get near her. 
Unfortunately, his reluctance cost him the opportunity, as a few days later, the girl removed her cast. Everyone was happy to see her all recovered, but when they noticed that she had grown some hair on that arm, they start making fun of her. The girl eventually starts crying and this is when Ben decides to swoop in. He takes her to a corner and consoles her, saying he will be with her no matter what. Soon, the two become good friends and eventually lovers. One day, the girl suddenly approaches Ben and inquires if he wants to kiss her. Without thinking twice, he says, yes, and the two agree to meet at their favorite spot on the weekend. Ben is elated that he is going to kiss a girl for the first time. He loses his sleep for the next few days, and when the weekend finally comes, he arrives at the spot early. He waits for the entire day, but the girl doesn't arrive, breaking his heart. The following day at school, Ben finally learns that the girl has relocated to another city with her parents. This is the first time he felt helpless and depressed. Back in the present, Jenkins gathers all his employees, and informs them that they are going to play a friendly football match with his friends. Ben and the others don't want to play, but they have no other choice. During the match, the supermarket team loses heavily, as it is clear that none of them knows how to play. The opposition team ramps up the score with goal after goal, making it 26-0. When Ben has had enough, he freezes the time and heads to the locker room to relax. Suddenly, a guy unfreezes himself and runs out. This reveals that Ben is not the only person who has acquired this ability. After a while, he heads out and snaps his fingers, allowing time to revert back to its original form. In the heat of the moment, Matt kicks the ball so aimlessly that it ends up hitting Jenkins in the face. He is immediately rushed to the hospital, and all the other teammates go home, leaving Ben and Sharon alone. In the next scene, the two stop by at a nearby dinner and try to get to know each other better. There, Ben gets to know that she is actually single, and that Matt was just joking about dating her. She then shares her dreams with Ben and he does the same. Sharon says that she's always wanted to meet a painter because she imagines they can see the true beauty of things. As the two talk, it is clear that they have chemistry. After their unofficial date, Ben walks Sharon home and awkwardly ruins their first kiss by pecking her on the cheeks, when she wanted it on the lips. The following day, a disfigured Jenkins announces that he is going to host a party on the occasion of his birthday. Sharon asks Ben if he wants to come with her as a date, and the latter happily agrees. Later, Jenkins calls the boys to his office and gives them separate tasks for his birthday preparations. Ben is assigned with hiring a stripper to the party. Although he has never talked to one in his life, he knows just the person who can help him. Later, he asks his best buddy, Sean, for help promising to take him to the party if they can get the job done. The two then head to a local club where Sean uses his experience, and hires a girl for the party. The next morning, Ben gets a call from an anonymous man, who claims to be an art aficionado. He has an art gallery in the city, and wants to have some of Ben's work in it. This delights the latter, as for the first time in his life, someone has appreciated his art. But unbeknownst to him, it turns out to be a prank call from Barry and Matt. That night, Ben gets dressed up for the party and heads to pick Sharon up. As soon as she opens the door, he happily tells her that a popular organization wants to display his artwork. Sharon wholeheartedly congratulates him, and soon, the two head to the party. When the two arrive, the party is already underway. Sean is being rejected by a girl, Matt and Barry are dancing like sociopaths, and Jenkins is on the DJ. Just then, Barry notices his ex-girlfriend, Susie among the attendees. It turns out she is Jenkins' brother's girlfriend. Soon, the stripper also arrives and heats up the party. In particular, Sean forms an instant connection with her. Meanwhile, Ben heads to the bathroom where he comes across Susie. Wasting no time, she expresses that, she wants them to reconcile and become a couple again. Ben of course doesn't want it, because he has already met the love of his life, but the crazy girl keeps on insisting. Out of the blue, she even kisses him forcefully. Ben immediately pushes her back, but when he turns around, he realizes that Sharon witnessed the whole incident. Ben tries to explain that it is not what it looks like, but the innocent cashier leaves without hearing a word. After a while, Ben goes straight to Sharon's apartment, and tries to explain everything to her, but she is too blinded by her anger. When she starts hurling obscenities, Ben gets upset and leaves. Due to the breakup, he once again spirals into his world of depression and insomnia. The only thing he looks forward to is his appointment with the supposed art gallery company, which had called him. In the next scene, the day finally arrives and Ben goes there with some of his best artwork. As expected, the gallery owner denies making an appointment with him, making Ben realize that he had been pranked. But just as he is about to leave, the owner notices some of his sketches of Sharon and asks to have a look. Unsurprisingly, he likes them and Ben is offered a night to display his work in the gallery. 
A few days later, Sharon receives an official invitation to Ben's art display. Although she is angry at him, she still decides to visit the gallery. When Sharon arrives there, she is taken aback to see that each artwork there is about her. It turns out Ben stopped making portraits of other women, and he used all of his time on Sharon. She was the love of his life, and he could not stare at any other woman other than her. Meanwhile, Sharon and Ben finally meet. The latter tries to explain what happened on the party night, but Sharon says that he doesn't have to. She has now realized how much he loves her, just by looking at his paintings. With this, the two get closer and share a romantic kiss, right in the middle of the art gallery room. In the final scene, Ben uses his powers and freezes everything. However, this time, even Sharon can move in the frozen world. The two then go out in the snow, where millions of snowflakes are suspended in the air. At last, the lovebirds kiss once more. The movie ends on a happy note. Thank you for watching.